Coromon is a Pokemon-like turn-based monster taming RPG with a story-driven narrative, six distinct biomes to explore, and evil to vanquish. Whilst at a first glance, one might assume the game is an absolute one-to-one -to, -one to the DS Pokemon titles like Black and White or even Diamond and Pearl, this actually could not be further from the truth. Coromon takes what we love from the pixel art era of Pokemon, adds to it, and subsequently takes its own spin on the formula. And in today's video, we will be discussing some of the key components in any monster taming game, but specifically with regards to Coromon, including the game's story, the gameplay and features, and of course, the monsters themselves. We will touch on the music and some other aspects as well, but these three will be sort of the major pillars of this review. Anyways, with all that said, make sure to sit back, relax, and let's answer that burning question. Question. Is Coromon worth the cash? Alright, so before we get started, let me just say that I have participated in sponsored content leading up to the release of Coromon, however, this is not one of those videos. The team had always given me creative freedom and never once asked me to give anything other than my honest opinions, and that's what we're going to be doing today. I mean, hell, the four sponsored videos we did, I offered to do for free, but the team was like, well, now you can get paid for it. So yeah, the team's definitely awesome, but my opinion on them, the professional relationship, and all that stuff will not reflect this review. We'll be talking about the product product itself. I just figured mentioning this would be necessary to clear any potential confusion, so yeah, let's get into the story. Do note that there will be some spoilers, but nothing major that I believe would ruin your playthrough. We will be discussing some of the antagonists, most of the biomes, and the post-game, though I will not show the end-game boss or anything like that. So our story starts off as many monster-taming RPGs do, with a young hero sleeping in. When prompted by our mom to get up, we get to customize our character with a large plethora of different clothing options, hairstyles, facial hair, and more. The game is ambiguous with the age of the hero, so this ends up working out. Today is the day that we start our job at Lux Solace, an organization dedicated to keeping the peace and studying Coromon, these magical creatures that inhabit the world. Eventually, we arrive to the Lux Solace campus and are assigned to the Titan Task Force, which are those whom are tasked with extracting essence from these incredible creatures called Titans, which make up the elements of the land. And with that, you're given a choice of one of three starters and are off on what starts out as a simple research quest but later becomes a journey to save the world. Now later in the game you'll come across these strange blue creatures, peoples, what have you, known as Wubians who have come to Earth to inhabit it as their planet was destroyed. In doing such they begin to infect the planet and its Coromon with some type of dark energy dubbed dark magic and the reason the titans whom usually lay dormant and exist within nature have spawned in physical forms is due to these invaders. You take the role of the Perseverer and one by one defeat each each titan collecting their essences, which will eventually culminate in a big battle, which again, I will not discuss here. Along the way, you'll meet some fun characters, some really cool areas, and honestly, it's a good time. The story is by no means revolutionary, but it is quite unique, and I cannot recall a monster taming game where you had to fend off what are essentially a group of alien invaders, at least not off the top of my head, so definitely cool story. The game also has a lot of really fun humor and references, like the Fisher, whom is a reference to the Viva La Dirt meme. The desert city is called Darude which is an obvious reference, and there's even an artist who talks about getting paid in exposure, which is absolutely hilarious. If you were a fan of a lot of the quips present within Nexomon, you'll be right at home here. Without getting too much into spoiler territory, my main critique of the story is that the ending kind of just comes very quickly and seems to dissipate just as fast, and I would have liked to see them explore the characters of the Wubians a little more. So not a bad story by any means, I wouldn't even call it mediocre, I'd say it's good, but I think it could have even been better. Now over to gameplay and features, we've got a bit to talk about and I've made a lot of videos expanding on the game's features so I'll leave some relevant ones linked below should you crave more information. Anyways, the game's combat is very similar to Pokemon with the addition of a stamina system that allows for a more competitive versatility. Using stronger moves will take more stamina, whilst using weaker and boosting moves will use less typically. You can also rest at any time to regain half of your total stamina, though you will lose a turn if you do so. This makes you have to decide when the best time is to use certain moves. The Coromon themselves come in three varieties being standard, potent, and perfect. Each Coromon has a potential value ranging from 1 to 21, which determines its stats. Imagine IVs from Pokemon, but it's just one value for the whole 
whole Coromon than it having an IV in each stat. Better Coromon will be potent, whilst Coromon with a perfect potential, aka 21, will be perfect. So essentially what we have here is a combination of the stat and shiny system. No more will you have a shiny that sucks. Every shiny is better, and even potent Coromon, which are about a 1 in 35 chance of spawning, will give you a much more accessible variant than the perfects that are about a 1 in 3000 chance of spawning. Every time you run into a potent, it gives you a nice little dopamine rush, and I can even imagine more so for a perfect if I was lucky enough to find one. I really like this system, I've often said it's the best shiny system in the genre. It gives you a more accessible shiny alongside a shiny that is still very rare, and these are always better. I've seen some criticism of the system saying that it makes people not want to use any of the non-shiny or standard variants, but to that I say, it's just like breeding in Pokemon. You're never going to want to use the Pokemon with bad natures and IVs in the competitive scene, but you can always use whatever you want in your playthrough and not really notice a difference. Anyways, a potential system affect how many skill points will be able to be allocated to your stats every time your potential gauge reaches the maximum through battle. Every time this happens, you'll be able to allocate three stat points to your liking, making the EV system from Pokemon not a thing here either. It doesn't matter which enemies you knock out, you get to allocate these stats yourself. No hidden values, and I genuinely appreciate that about this game. Outside of battle, there's a lot of fun to be had with the game featuring a lot of Zelda-like puzzles, whether it be having to match up certain colors, trying to figure out which warp to take in a specific room, there's a stealth section, or even navigating a pyramid where arrows are being shot at you. Each of the game's biomes feature distinct puzzles, and I really, really like this. There's more to the game than just walking in a straight line. The game sort of has its own version of HMs, but I promise promise you that they are nowhere nearly as intrusive, in fact they're not intrusive at all when you receive them. Essentially every trainer gets a gauntlet, which both can hold their spinners, which are the game's capture devices, and allow for specific modules to be installed that will let you manipulate the terrain to your advantage. The push module will allow you to push rocks and logs out of your way, the burn module will burn bushes, and there's even a scan module that allows you to search for hidden items. This makes going back to areas you've already explored very rewarding as you'll find something new each time you unlock one of these modules. The game's progression from a gameplay standpoint is very good in my opinion. I never felt super over leveled or under leveled during a playthrough, and having options like the smart gem, which increases your XP in battle, or the lazy gem, or the sloth gem, which kind of act like EXP shares but one's better than the other, were a nice reward rather than than something to be ignored in fear of making the game too easy. Speaking of which, the game has difficulty settings ranging from easy and normal, which pretty much have standard rule sets, up to hard and insane, which play like nuzlocks, having permadeath and other restrictions applied. Furthermore, the game has a complete array of custom settings available once you've defeated the first Titan. This means that you can randomize every encounter, every trainer Coromon, randomize items, move sets, and so much more. You could definitely check out my difficulty settings video for more information on all of this if you want to know the sheer magnitude of these options. It's kind of nuts. Now I do have a couple complaints, but I feel like both of them are easy fixes. The first thing is that the post game is quite barren. The only real thing to do is to catch Coromon, Shiny Hunt, fight the devs over and over again, and of course PvP, which I can't really touch on in this review because nobody has the game yet, but I will say that the fact that there even is PvP is quite epic. You could also go back and do custom playthroughs, which adds a huge amount of replayability to the game, but in terms of just post-game on your same save, there's not a whole lot yet. Now the thing is, this is actually something that will be rectified with free post-launch updates, so I can't really lean into the game too much because more end-game content is coming. My other complaint is that gameplay does feel a little bit slow at times. It just feels like it takes a while for the Coromon to leave the spinners and for the encounters to occur. I think maybe if they added an option to like speed up the animations by, I don't know, 150, 200%, like you can with a lot of Game Boy emulators, I think that would help rectify the problem completely. Now, I don't want you to be able to speed up too fast because that would be absolutely ridiculous, but just a tad. All in all, with regards to gameplay, the game is solid with the battle system allowing for more complexity than Nexomon, but less than Temtem if you're looking for reference and the overworld mechanics are top-notch. Coromon really does excel in gameplay, more so than most monster taming games I've played. Okay, so the monster designs in Coromon are also very strong in my opinion, with a great mix of cute Coromon like the starters, some really cool rugged designs like Dugterra, Chiraptor, Toravolt, etc., and we even have some abstract designs like Grimask and Orochi. The game has a great blend of more slender Coromon and some thick chunky boys, which is really nice too because a lot of games generally favor the more slender and sort of fast-looking monsters, so I'm happy to see these 
these big fat tanks too. Including a ghost type was also a fantastic idea in my opinion because ghosts allow for like I said very abstract designs and despite there being no bug type I feel like there are a lot of bug Coromon as well which makes me really happy because these types of designs can go underutilized in the genre. Now whether it be Coromon's fun and engaging plot, the game's amazing design from both a progression and general gameplay standpoint, or its awesome and very balanced monster designs, the game is a must buy for any fan of monster taming games like Pokemon, and even Pokemon fans alike. The game has some of the best music in the genre composed by Davi Vask, whose YouTube channel will be linked below by the way, and gives you a nostalgic feel despite being a fresh take on a traditional Pokemon-esque formula. While the game does in my opinion have some very minor issues like lack of post game, which will be added in a free update anyway, and with transitions being a tad slower than I'd like, I'd have to say I'd had an absolute blast playing this game and I honestly think you will too. So all in all, is Coromon worth the cash? Hell yes. It's easily one of my favorite monster taming games of all time, sitting up there with games like Black and White 2, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Platinum, etc. I'd put it up there in that camp. Now, I do hope that this review was helpful. I've honestly had a blast playing this game, and we are currently running a new Let's Play on the channel that you can check out if you're interested. We should be a few episodes in by now. I've also uploaded a video that showcases every single Coromon in the game, as well as some other guides and stuff as well. Like I said, links will be in the description to some relevant and content. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and if you are a fan of Coromon or the monster taming genre as a whole, definitely subscribe to the channel because I put out new videos every single day. We're kind of uploading a few a day right now, but at least one a day. Um, special thanks to my patrons, especially Dro Ghost, Dark Persona, Jim Hamilton, and Steel Case, and with that, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.